Today, as we look at lesson three in our magnetism unit, we're going to be learning about another of the properties or characteristics that all magnets share. And this characteristic that we're going to be looking at today is what's called a magnetic field. We're going to be looking at how magnetic fields are formed and created and also why they're important. Now, as we've mentioned several times already, all magnets do have three characteristics in common. They produce magnetic fields, they attract to ferromagnetic materials, which is what we discussed in the last lesson, and then they can also attract or repel other magnets. Today we're going to be focusing on the magnetic fields that these magnets do produce. In order to be a magnet, an object must produce a magnetic field. We have two types of magnets that we'll be talking about in detail a little bit more later, but we have objects that permanently produce a magnetic field, meaning they have a magnetic field all the time. These are called permanent magnets. And then we have what are called temporary magnets, and these are just objects that produce magnetic fields sometimes, or for a little while, or maybe a magnetic field that can be activated and deactivated. And we'll also look at those and we'll actually make an example of a temporary magnet in one of our activities. As we look at what magnetic fields are, magnetic fields are basically these lines of force, invisible lines of force, that surround a magnet. The magnetic field is what actually gives the magnet its magnetism. Without the magnetic field, it would not be able to attract objects, it wouldn't be able to attract or repel other magnets, it wouldn't be able to do all of those other things that we talk about that magnets can do. And even though we can't see the magnetic field, because it is essentially energy, it's a force around the magnet, and we can't see it, but we can detect its presence, and we'll be looking at how we can detect the presence of magnetic fields, there's a few different ways we can do it. But before we get into that too much, I want to talk about how magnetic fields are formed. And again, magnetic fields can form permanently in an object, like a permanent magnet, or they can form temporarily. But magnetic fields are formed because of the way that the atoms, and specifically the electrons in the atoms of a substance, line up and arrange themselves. Each atom has a very, very tiny magnetic field that's created by the motion of the electrons around its nucleus. Uh, normally, we wouldn't be able to detect this, but what happens in a magnet is these magnetic fields will line up in the same direction. And you can see in the picture there, the unmagnetized object has magnetic fields that are kind of facing, one's facing this way, or facing the other way, or facing opposite direction. They're kind of all over the place, but in the magnetized object, the magnetic fields of all the different atoms that make that up, or most of the atoms that make it up, are lined up in the same direction. So this gives a strong enough magnetic field that the object will be a magnet. When these electrons and these magnetic fields line up, we call this a magnetic domain. And then, of course, the more of these atoms, electrons, that are lined up consistently in the same direction, the stronger and the more powerful the magnetic field that's generated will be. If you just have, you know, a majority of them lined up in one direction, that would create a magnetic field that's not as strong as if they were all lined up in one direction consistently. Now, in order to detect magnetic fields, we're going to look at two different ways we can do this here in our next labs that we do. But the first of these ways is by simply using iron filings. And when we talk about iron filings, that's just basically small particles of iron, about the size of tiny, tiny pieces of sand that we can use to spread around. And then we can see, based on how those iron filings line up, the direction of the lines of force from the magnet and the shape and the strength of the magnetic field. And again, we will be looking at that in some labs that we do a little bit later. Another interesting way that we can do it is by using a ferromagnetic liquid called ferrofluid. And ferrofluid's really interesting. We'll also be looking at it here in a few days, but ferrofluid contains iron oxide, which contains iron, which is a ferromagnetic material. So this is actually a liquid that will be attracted to a magnet. And by using ferrofluid, we're able to see some pretty neat shapes and patterns of magnetic fields in different types of magnets. At this point, we've talked about two of the different characteristics of magnets. We've talked about ferromagnetic materials and what that means. We've talked about magnetic fields, how they're formed, and how we can detect and recognize them. And in our next lesson, we'll be talking about the third property, which is magnetic attraction and repulsion. After we finish that, we'll be doing some more activities, we'll be making some magnets, looking at different ways we can create these magnetic domains and create these magnetic fields. So we have a lot more coming up in this unit, but look for some lessons, look for some labs about magnetic fields and different ways that we can observe them.